Hi there. Happy New Year. It's the Deborah Peters Show coming to you live from Los Angeles. And I want to welcome you all here today. I'm really excited about this show. I'm a little late getting it off the ground. I was uh, busy with a client on a call and um, you never want to cut your clients off. So here we are and I'm very excited to share the day with you. I'm excited to share the beginning of a brand new year with you. I'm absolutely thrilled to be covering off this topic today because it's just time, you know, it's time to break free. It's great to see all you guys jumping on here so quickly. Thank you to Hector and Kimberly and Victoria, Bill, Michael, Rick, oh my gosh, I love you guys. You know, I got to tell you that um, when I first started uh, getting this show off the ground, you know, there's always sort of this kind of nervousness, you know, about whether anyone will show up or not. And I just decided that I was going to do this for the experience of doing it. And, and there would be some kind of a blessing that would come from it. Um, I would grow as a person, I would grow as a professional, I would um, have the experience of putting this together so that when we actually start approaching some of the networks in the next couple of months when my book launches, um, I'd have the experience under my belt. I mean, I told myself all sorts of things about why I should just do it even if no one showed up. Uh, I built out my YouTube channel <laughs> with all of these episodes. So I want to thank you guys. Hi, Charlene. Hi, David. Um, hi, Rain. Nice to have you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And um, Robert and Annie, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Kimberly. I really appreciate it. And you know, that I love that kind of feedback because I what I want to give my contribution is um, everything that I've experienced in my life uh, up until this point. And um, hey, Paolo from Sicily. So um, and I've experienced some really um, challenging times in my life that I won't go into today. You can. Uh, catch it on other episodes. But I was thinking recently, and I, I think in the last episode, I, I talked about contribution. So before I get into how our points of view are blocking success, let's just talk a little bit about contribution. So usually contribution is something that is looked at from the perspective of that it's you know it's about writing a check it's about doing a good deed it's about calling someone or seeing something like it's usually considered being um something that we go through the motions of doing that that's typically how contribution is perceived right hi eric um but I want to give you a whole other way of looking at contribution because I think this is really an important consideration for us to all have about ourselves. So what if your contribution was just being you and it wasn't about what you do. It, it isn't about, how much you work. It isn't about how you look. It isn't about, um, thank you, Eric, you're sweet. Thank you and happy new year. It isn't about um, who you know or who you hang out with. Um, and it, it, it's, it's not about a doing, you know, we are so conditioned to think that everything is about doing. And yes, and I see it all the time on social media, you know, massive action, grind it out and get things done and go get it. And I say that stuff too sometimes, you know, it's just, it's just kind of how we talk. It's a lingo. And, 
And I've tried to be aware of it and dial it back so that I'm really saying things that are what I really mean, not just saying things because they're a popular saying. Um, and I've gotten into a habit of espousing that kind of narrative. And I would invite you to look at the things that you're saying as well, because words within each word is its own universe. Like each word has its own energy, its own meaning, its own life force, if you will. And when you put that out there, it makes an impact on you. It's not so much your environment. Yes, it makes an impact on your environment. But that's after it makes an impact on you because you are your environment. So those words, you can tear yourself down or you can build yourself up. And hi, Jason. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you. Happy New Year, everybody. Can you believe it's the 3rd of January? And I mean that from a place of not, can you believe it's already the 3rd of January? No, no, no. That's not how I mean it. Can you believe it's only the 3rd of January? <laughs> like, I have been on the phone today calling people, and um, I'm wondering, like, where is everybody? You know, I had to say to myself on January 2nd, you know what, just chill. People aren't quite back at work yet just because you're hitting the pavement running at 150 miles an hour. Oh, it's the 4th of January. Thank you. See? Already I've lost a day. Um, and then on the 2nd of January, I said to myself, okay, people are probably just getting back to work and they're still warming up their computers. You know, I had to remind myself to kind of slow down because I'm absolutely thrilled and enthusiastic about this year. So let me wrap up about this whole contribution thing because I'll tell you what happens to me is I get on here and I have so much to say if you could imagine what it's like to live in my mind, let me just kind of give you sort of a thumbnail sketch of what it's like to be Deborah Peters. So in my mind, I never stop thinking. And it comes at me in multiple streams of awareness. So for instance, like right now, or when I'm on a stage speaking at an event, I can be in the moment thinking about what I'm saying and I can hear myself talking. And at the same time, I have sort of like these multiple streams of ideas that are flowing into that frame of thought that I could be addressing and saying next that would build out the point that I'd like to make. And then at the same time, I'm tapping into your energy, the listener, the viewer, the person in the audience, either through verbal or nonverbal or just energy. And I'm picking up on how you're perceiving what I'm saying. So within all of that, then I'm selecting from these different ways of building out my point so that the point comes across in a way that I think that you, the listener, can receive it in a way that's going to serve you for your highest good. So I've got all that going on. And that's just on the one point. Then within that, I have all of these other ideas coming in that would shift to the energy that you're experiencing in your life, um, that I should take the conversation down these different pathways. So I've got all that going on at the same time. And, um, so I'm out there in the audience with you and I'm in here and I'm over there and it's just a lot going on. And I'm like that 24 seven, you know, I, I sleep like that. I wake up like that. I, everything I do, that's how my life is. And I love it because it's just a lot coming in, but sometimes it's, I have to ask it to sort of slow down because, um, you know, if I'm putting together the curriculum for a program, I can get distracted by all of it. So that I'm just saying that to warn you. So if I go off on tangents, forgive me. Hi, Ted. Nice to have you join us today. Happy New Year. Um, and Kevdet, very cool to have you. 
thank you for joining me. So let me finish on this point of contribution. So what if um, your contribution to this planet, to this world, to this reality, to this now is you being you? And it isn't about anything you do. It's just you being you. Have you ever considered that? I'm, I'm really curious, like how many of you have had this conversation with yourself where you say to yourself like, whoo, wow, um, this being that I am, the person that loves, the person that um, contributes, the person that thinks, the person that feels, the person that perceives, the person that receives, that allows, that that is generating all of this energy and bringing it to the world and just being open and vulnerable and just being who you are. The more you can be who you are, the greater contribution you make to this world energetically because all of the molecules of the universe, of the multiverse, are your molecules. And so the more you're in alignment with you and loving you and taking care of you and expressing you and creating you, the greater gift you are. And it's not by anything that you do. It's just who you're being. So then when you decide to actually go to an event or go meet some people or show up in a room or show up online, that contribution actually has the ability to really contribute greatness to this world. And I would like to invite all of you to take some time, even if it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds and look into the mirror once or twice or three times a day and consider it to be like food for your soul and just look into your eyes and just go, thank you for being you. I appreciate you for you being you and just leave it at that because it's that contribution and acknowledging your contribution that actually contributes to the greatness of all of us. If you're playing small, if you're holding yourself back, if you're limiting yourself, if you're in some way criticizing yourself or telling yourself you're not good enough or whatever all of those old mind chatter patterns are, if you're playing that game, please stop because that's not how you're designed. That's not who you, who you are. That's someone else's projection or belief system that you picked up consciously or unconsciously. And it, you really sometimes have to actually make a conscious decision not to keep saying it, right? So when it comes to contribution, I've actually had to teach this to myself because I was not raised with... Um, with that kind of awareness. And another thing I had to teach myself is to, to be happy. I had to teach myself that happiness is a choice. And then every day I had to teach myself to be happy and to be happy regardless of my circumstances. Hi, Kiko. Um, so happy that you joined us. Happy New Year. So in the teaching of things to yourself, you're really just kind of bringing yourself back home to who you really are. And when you take a moment, and it doesn't take long, you guys, like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two, three times a day, just pop into the mirror and go, hi, <laughs> love you. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. Your contribution to the world. Keep smiling. People love it. And you'd be surprised how that actually regenerates the energy and the cellular structure of your body. 
it makes you younger it makes you happier it makes you healthier it makes you <sighs> it just makes you connect with yourself more deeply so i feel that this year coming up uh, that we're in now, that we're the fourth day in, now that I can count. Thank you, David. <laughs> um, is, is my year of being my greatest contribution to the world. And I, I say that not to discount everything I've done already, but I say that from the place of how I have come to this awareness of um, by being me, by, by having a really high quality relationship with me, that that is my contribution. What that does is it opens us to receive. So for any of you listening, if you're thinking about, well, it's easy for her to say, you know, she's got all this background or done all this work on herself. So it's easy for her to say this, that, you know, it's about contributing is, is being the best you. Hi, Star. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, I want you to just drop your barriers around that. So just drop your barriers, drop them some more, drop them some more, like whatever shield you may have up around you that you think is a protection that what the message I'm bringing today might be bouncing off of that shield. I want you to just drop those barriers and just keep dropping them and dropping them and dropping them until you feel like this sense of calm and peace around vulnerability because it's our willingness to be vulnerable with ourselves that enables us to be the greatest contribution that we can be and that's really what this universe is built on so if you if you consider how many people, how many millions of people, maybe how many billions of people every day get up and go to work and they're not in alignment with themselves and they're just going through the motions and how much they have to effort at fulfillment, how much they have to work at feeling good about themselves, right? But you take one person for example, that when they begin their day, they align with themselves and then they go out into the world in an aligned state and they practice holding that alignment throughout the day, whatever that takes. If it means stopping and meditating two, three times a day, writing down self-talk. I mean, there's times that I just sit and I write down, I write things out. If I can't seem to get past any sort of limiting beliefs in my head and they just keep regurgitating. You know, I'm like the queen of paper. So I have, <laughs> I have a stack of paper here and sometimes I just recenter myself by sitting down and just writing out a reminder to myself about what a contribution I am to this humanity, the more I'm being me right? So it's, it's about you being more you and allowing that beingness to shine. I was walking down the street today, I ran an errand at lunch and I was walking down the street today and um, I could see people trying to look at me out of the corner of their eyes. So I would look right into their eyes and I'd give them a big smile and I'd say, Happy New Year. And then they would light up they were just like flowers. It's like, they were like wilted flowers and then the sun came out and they just went poof. And I was thinking about that. How is that with, um, with us? Like, 
when someone gives me a big grin and says happy new year or good morning or whatever, I'm like, yeah, that feels really good. So you have to care about how you feel. Because when you care about how you feel, you'll put those negative thoughts in check and you won't let them run away with you. And you'll become more self-aware. See, self-awareness is the key. The more self-aware you can become, the more you can check yourself before the negativity runs off with you. I kind of think of it in terms of um, like ants. Have you ever seen a, an ant pick up a leaf and carry it off? <laughs> you know, or it picks up another bug and carries it off. So that's kind of, you know, it's a good metaphor. So if the, if the ant represents your negative thinking and um, you are the leaf or the other bug that the ant just picks up and carries off, if you don't keep yourself in check with you, then you can, your, your negative thinking can just pick you up and carry you off and you can lose hours, you can lose days, you can lose decades. I know people, I've had clients that have lost decades just whirling around in their negativity because they didn't have the self-awareness to check themselves and to catch it. So that's really the key. It really is. So let's talk a little bit about your points of view. Um, and by the way, I'm going to keep this to a short show today because I have a client call uh, that I, I scheduled for right after the show that I need to prepare for. It's one of those end of day calls. Um, so let's talk about points of view. So what are points of view? Well, our points of view are um, a collection of the thoughts that we think over and over and over. And by the way, I wanted to make you aware uh, and let you know that I have a class coming up at mid-month and it's the shift change and heal your money story course and it's an amazing course it's nine modules every single module I teach it live each module is two hours and we go over everything around even even we have a module on learning how to trust yourself so we go through everything that you need to shift, change, and heal your money story. And I would like to invite all of you to apply, to attend, because if there's ever a time in history to let go of all of your limiting beliefs about money, this is it. You, you couldn't be handed on a silver platter a better time. And I'll tell you why. It's a new month. It's a, it's a new year. That's two big reasons. Third big reason is this is a really big pivotal time in history. Hi, Michael. Nice to have you. Where um, the consciousness of humanity is so much more evolved than it's ever been, ever. The veil of 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 denial, the veil of lack, the veil of scarcity, the veil of limitation, all of that has dissolved already. Thank you, Kimberly. That Yeah, that was a great module. I enjoyed that. Um, those veils have already dissolved on a quantum level. If you're still holding on to them, then it's just a point of view, which was really the topic I wanted to get into today. So please, um, I'll shoot you over a message with the link to my Shift Change Heal Your Money Story online course. And um, the other class I have, only this one is coming up in late February, and it's a live class. It's a two-day Business Accelerator Bootcamp. So if you're looking to scale your business, this is the bootcamp for you. And nobody else has this intel because I've blended some really super duper high impact mind tech with all the pragmatic tools to scale your business. 
and I'd love to have you join me. So this is what I do. So for each course, I literally hand pick less than 10 people. And I do that through a discovery call because it's important to me that I have the right mix of people. It's, I don't, I don't need a class of, you know, 50 people. I just need less than 10 super highly engaged people that are committed to becoming their greatness. So I invite you to step into your greatness. This is my invitation to you to really, truly step into your greatness. This is the year to do it. There's just the waiting game is a mind trick basically. So let me tell you a little bit about points of view. So your points of view are what create your reality. And a lot of people aren't aware of that. They, they think that reality is something outside of them. And I'm curious if, uh, if that's where you're at. I mean, do you think that reality is something that's external to you? Because I think that's really the first step here, isn't it? Is to get into a place where you know and you accept that you create your own reality because that's truly the first hurdle. If you think there's something outside of you that's doing that, then that would be kind of like, I would send you off to do that first leg of personal growth work on yourself so you can come to this understanding of how powerful you are there was um a really pivotal teacher that i love to study and um his name was neville goddard and he wrote an amazing book um what did i do with my neville goddard pages so neville goddard the power of awareness. I really recommend you go online and you print out the PDF. And it'll it for those of you that don't understand how you that you are your own reality, that you create your own reality. I would say that would be a good prerequisite to be able to get into my classes because you need to be at that level of consciousness first and foremost in in order for the classes to be of value to you. Because if you think you're a victim and life is happening to you, then you will always, um, well, you just won't be ready and the material will frustrate you. And, you know, I don't want you to come to my program and feel frustrated. I want you to get the absolute most out of it. So points of view are something that we collect along the way of our lives. It comes through our experiences, the relationships we have, the people we engage with um, and what we're willing to accept when someone else projects onto us. I had a call earlier today because I'm in the process of raising money for my um, capital for my business. And I was on the phone with a fellow that matches investors with companies. And it's someone that I've worked with for years. And I've matched him up with a lot of different clients that we have. You know, over the years, I've made people millions and millions and millions of dollars. And um, it's a great testimonial, isn't it? So now it's time for uh, me to fund my business for that next level of global um, advancement. And we were having this conversation. And I, I knew when I spoke with him, because I've worked with him for so long that in some places he was going to play devil's advocate and um, his name's John. And I just said, you know, John, here's the deal. Whatever someone tells me about what I'm building and what I'm developing. Hi, John. Nice to have you. Um, is only their point of view. And it has nothing to do with my capacity and that's the point of view that I'd like you to take on today. That when you're sharing what you do with others, you know, whether you're doing business development and you're looking for new clients, whether you're working with your business partner and you're developing the growth of your business. Hi, Johnny Parker. Great to have you. Happy New Year. I haven't connected with you in ages. Good to have you. 
Um, whatever it is that you're doing in life, just remember, Lynn King, Happy New Year. Whenever someone says something to you, it's just their point of view. And it's not the truth. It's just the way they see things. And so you can choose not to take that on. You can choose not to have your buttons pushed. You can choose to um, stay in your power and let them have their point of view. Because at the end of the day, it's just a point of view. I was on a board of directors for the last few years and um, you know, I was the rebel rouser, I suppose, at the monthly board meetings because I was asking all the hard questions. Why is our board functioning like this or not functioning the way it could? Uh, how come we're not doing more for our community? Why is it whenever we try to create community engagement, it gets blocked? I was asking these hard questions and I would get these blank stares because no one wanted to really address that, those white elephants in the room. And I got accused of disrespecting authority. And so I said, well, you know, here's the deal. First of all, I just think we have a values conflict. So you want to look at the relationships that you have in your life and just really assess if you have the same values, because if you have the same values, then you can, you can grow together, especially in relationships and romantic relationships and business partnerships. Um, the thing is, is that my point of view was just that it was a point of view. It didn't mean I was disrespecting authority. I was just asking questions that no one was willing to answer. So they're trying to play it off like I was disrespecting authority when in actuality, I was just expressing a point of view. So I want you to really take some time over the weekend and I want you to look at how you drive your life forward and whose points of view are you really living? Are you living the points of view of your parents? Are you living the points of view of some social structure? Are you living the points of view of an industry? I'll share with you another example. I was speaking with a client today and um, he was dealing with a health insurance issue. And so we had this conversation around, and this happens all the time in a lot of, a lot of industries. So it's not just health insurance, but it makes for a good metaphor. So we were having this conversation around how, isn't it interesting, I said to him, when you're first signing up for, say, your health insurance, for example, the culture and the mindset and the level of service that you get from the representatives that are trying to sell you the program is wonderful. You know, they'll bend over backwards for you. They'll do anything for you. They're nice, they're, they're, they're fun, they're engaging, they're available all the time. But then when you make some sort of uh, claim on your health insurance, then you get transferred over to this other department and it's almost like a different planet, right? It's a different culture that you have to wade through hours of phone tree, voicemail, recording stuff to get a human being. And then when you get somebody, you know, they don't know what you're talking about and they put you off and they make excuses. And it's like, wow, like that's a whole other culture. So, it, I mean, that could open a whole can of worms around capitalism. But the point I'm trying to make is that I really want you to spend some time over the weekend. And I want you to, at this time of year, I want you to take a look at your values. I want you to look at inherent in those values. What are your beliefs? What are your points of view? Because points of view and beliefs are just thoughts a collection of thoughts that we, we think over and over and over. And it creates our attitudes and it creates our points of view. And frankly, it creates our blocks. It's what blocks us from expansion. I recently had a conversation with someone whom, you know, we were, uh, we were in a, partnership together and everything was going well except 
when we bumped up against my standards, right? And so my standards are enthusiasm for life, um, inspiration for what we're creating, creating constantly and never ceasing to create, like constant creation, um, a belief system around infinite energy, because I don't think we get energy. I know we don't get energy. We are energy. And how we think is actually emitting energy. So if you think negative thoughts, you're driving your energy down. And it starts to show up in your physical body. You know, it starts to make you old, it makes you tired, it makes you negative. And then, you know, after that swirls around for a while, then it starts to impact the cellular structure. And that starts to show up as aches and pains, low energy, lethargy. Is that a word? Is that a word? I don't think so. Lethargic. <laughs> um, just, you know, bad health, basically. And then pretty soon it's disease. And then we can I localize it and it's we can say it's in this area of the body and then we can give it a name. And, you know, it just is like this downward spiral that is never ending. And I don't do that game because I get younger every day and that's my belief system. And I believe when I talk to myself that way, that I actually works that way. And I welcome every birthday that comes along because every birthday is just another birthday to feel even better because I'm wiser, I'm happier, I'm smarter, I'm, I'm greater, I have a better relationship with me. You know, that kind of just dynamic right and so and then within that is creating money so you know it's just um look at the end of the day whatever it is is all about how you view yourself and how you view life and when we stop making these things wrong and we embrace the infinite possibilities of who we are, then we allow ourselves to receive more and create more. And it's fun and it's interesting and it's inspiring and it can be challenging because the challenge is just letting go of your fear and your doubt and your self-talk and all that bullshit noise that comes from the naysayers and the buzzkills on the planet. And I have one more thing to say. Thank you, John. Deborah rocks. And hey, Curtis, thank you for joining us. So I have one more thing to say, and then I'm going to say goodnight, and I'm going to wish you a blessed weekend. And this is the, the point I want to make. Oh, before I do that, let me just give you some housekeeping. So I'm going to switch these um, show times to 12 noon for, for a variety of reasons, which I won't go into. But basically, 12 noon next Tuesday, PST, and 12 noon Friday, PST. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I'm losing all my European tribe and my, and my um, Middle Eastern tribe. It's just, it's just the time zones are too wonky. So, you know, the UK is eight hours ahead of us and um, Europe's nine hours and Dubai's 12 hours and Turkey's 11 hours, Singapore is 16 hours, you know, I'm all over the world. So if I do noon, I can pretty much, you know, hit it at a time that's more or less good for everybody. So I apologize if that challenges you, but I think that um, if we do it over the lunch hour, that can be your lunch break. So if I said 12 o'clock, I apologize, I meant 12.30. So give people time to grab some food and jump on Facebook Live. Okay, okay, so this is the thing I want to leave you guys with. And see, I'm losing light anyway. So the thing I want to leave you with is this. 
if you ever catch yourself looking at what is, I want you to think like a race car driver and put your focus back on what you're wanting to create. Because if you look at what is, it can kick your ass, okay? It can kick your ass and it can bring you down. And it can convince you that you can't have what you want. And that's not true. You can totally have anything that you desire in this life if you are willing to train your mind and focus on your outcome only, regardless of all of the circumstances that are contrary to that outcome. And that includes the points of view of others, that includes the points of view of society, that includes your spouse, your parents, your friends, anybody who shows up in your life and says anything negative. Just tell them they can't talk to you <laughs> until they say something positive, because that's my rule. And the reason I have that, the reason I learned this is because I grew up in a home that was really mean and cruel and filled with criticism and negativity and violence and abuse. And I said to myself when I was a little girl, you know what? These people don't want to hear me because they're too busy being negative. But there'll be a day after I've moved out and I've left all these people behind to their own misery that I'll be able to talk to the world and there'll be people in the world that are interested in knowing these tools so that they can A, love themselves more, which is you, and have a better life, which you are all deserving of, and share it with everyone in your circle. Everyone. It'll make your marriage better. It'll make your friendships stronger. It'll make your children happier, healthier, and it will make the world a better place. So thank you so much for being a part of this. I so grateful for all your likes and your shares and for you taking the time to be here. I know you're all busy and you made a choice to spend time with me and that means the world to me. So next week, Tuesday at 1230, let me know what you would like me to cover because I can cover, guys, I've been doing this for over 20 years in 16 countries and I can, I can cover off anything you want from leadership to business growth, mindset hacks, relationship. You know, I was a couples coach for 10 years. I've worked with heads of state. I've got politicians elected. I've built training programs for the FBI. You know, it goes deep. Like I've done just some really cool shit, basically. <laughs> And next week I'll have my new website. So um, I don't think I'll have it by Tuesday. We did the edits today, but probably Wednesday or Thursday for sure by next Friday's show. So thank you. Have an amazing weekend. Thanks, John. Good luck with that real estate business. I'm excited for you. Love you guys. Take care. Have a blessed weekend. Happy, happy new year. 2019, baby. Here we go.